day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great. Today we're coming to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I thought this would be a great time to talk about the legend, Roberto Clemente, and what happened to him. Days of Jordan the Lion begins now. This is just an absolutely amazing mural. I wanted to start here because I always come by, whether I'm even trying to or not, I always make it a point somehow to end up seeing the Roberto Clemente mural while I'm in Pittsburgh. And he, I mean, he was a legend. He was Puerto Rican born. He was one of the first wave of Latino players, which now, I mean, there's so many. He kind of opened the door to that dream. And he played 18 seasons for the Pittsburgh Pirates on the uh, last game of his 18th season, 1972. He hit his 3,000th hit. He had two World Series wins. He was a World Series MVP. Guy really had just done everything. Career batting average over 300. I think it was like 316. And when I met Dave Parker, I said, Dave, what was like Roberto like? He said, when I came to the Pirates and I went to Pirate City, they told me he was great. And he was great great in every sense of the word. He was a great teammate. He was great in the off season. He would send supplies like baseball equipment and stuff down to Puerto Rico. He would donate his time in the off season to coaching baseball in places like Nicaragua, which is why he ended up helping at the end. He was a great ambassador to the game while he was here in town and a great teammate. I mean, he took young players under his wing. I remember hearing about how when Doc Ellis was a pirate, he started making a lot of money. He was kind of acting crazy. He was like, just, it was like culture shock for him. And Roberto took him under his wing and they became roommates and just kind of helped get him more acclimated to being a professional. Dave said kind of the same thing that when he went to Pirate City, they introduced him to Roberto and he immediately saw like, this is how a leader behaves. And he said and then when Roberto passed away, Willie kind of took over that role. So sad when he was trying to help out. It was, like I said, he had played in 18 seasons and was coaching in Nicaragua in the off season and had went home to Puerto Rico for December. And Nicaragua had had a really bad earthquake. And so he had been sending supplies to help out and found out that the supplies were being basically intercepted by the government of Nicaragua and they were selling them. And so he decided he wanted to charter his own plane and take the supplies there himself to make sure that they, they made it. And he was gonna accompany it and everything. So that's what he did. The man who owned a charter company named Rivera approached him. They agreed on a price that they would fly him over there for, which I think was $4,000. And um, and then Rivera, the, fl the the plane that he was using was like a DC-7. And it was a, a really unreliable plane that had been made during World War II and was notorious for having engine problems. The plane had had engine problems a month before and had crashed into concrete trying to take off. So they had had it serviced, but not properly, not by the standards, uh, they cut corners and didn't inspect the engine fully. And so the, they never did a test flight. So when they went to fly the supplies, Roberto Clemente boarded a flight on a plane that had had a, a basically a crash before and had not test flown since. The original pilot that they were supposed to use called in, said he couldn't make it. So they had to scurry to find another pilot uh, this particular plane required a co-pilot and the man who owned the airline was going to do that, but he wasn't even certified to be there. So they end up leaving and, uh, and actually before they took off, the plane was sent uh, down the runway to be serviced again because it was experiencing engine problems two hours before. Roberto Clemente didn't know that. The uh, it's believed that the pilot that they hired didn't even know that. And then they all boarded with actually 4,000 pounds over the weight limit. They had extra fuel because they wouldn't be able to fuel up in Nicaragua, so they were bringing their return fuel. 
And when they went to take off, a man on the ground said that he, he saw that they were having trouble getting any elevation. And uh, within two and a half minutes into the flight, the pilot contacted the ground control and said, I have to turn around and come back. They believed that he was starting to dump fuel and, um, and he was so low that when he was trying to turn around and dump fuel, um, within three minutes of takeoff, the plane had crashed. It was a four engine plane. It had crashed into the water and all five aboard passed away. They were able to retrieve the four engines and found out that engine number two had failed and that's what caused the first issue, but that also the third engine had an issue with it as well. And the, uh, the only body that they were ever able to recover was that of the pilot. Now let's go to PNC Park and see the statue. And I want to tell you something amazing that happened because of Roberto Clemente passing away, a rule that they ended up changing. And Andy Warhol, we are out there. That's awesome. Of course, it is my goal to see every park. So it's my first time seeing PNC Park here in Pittsburgh. Never got to see Three Rivers. I feel like we should go see all the statues, especially Clemente. They're gonna open the gates here any minute. There's Willie. Are we Stargell? We'll definitely check out the pirate store, but I already have a hat. You guys know I always get a hat. I already have one from when I was shopping at the Monroeville Mall. Had to get it there because of Dawn of the Dead. Dave Parker signed it for me when I hung out with him. Roberto Clemente Walker. Call him the Great One. And that's what's at the base here. That is awesome. He was actually doing his, his flight and his help to go help Nicaragua on New Year's Eve 72. So they changed the Hall of Fame rules, which were that you had to wait several years before you were eligible. If you died because of Roberto Clemente, you were eligible the following year. So he ended up getting inducted in 1973. And they ended up naming the Commissioner's Award, the Roberto Clemente Award. And it basically goes to the player who is the best community leader and all around, you know, example of baseball in the community. So cool. Now what's neat is the park actually is right here on the water, right off the rivers. How cool is that? And they have all the retired numbers which Clemente is in down here. So when you watch a game here, this is actually the outfield. So we'll see this in the background because I got tickets kind of off to the side of first baseline. You can actually see another bridge over here, over here. Here you can see all the numbers right there that have been retired. Clemente is 21. And then you notice up here in blue, they have Jackie Robinson, 42. Well, now they are talking about wanting to get 21 retired across baseball just like 42 is i know i have no say in it but i actually kind of feel like it's more of an honor i would think for people to want to wear your jersey number keep it active bonus wagner hall of fame 1936 fred clark A trainer these are all hall of famers so if you're a hall of famer you get a baseball out here and there's some murals of famous people from pittsburgh over here on this wall all part of the baseball experience satchel page and they even have baseballs for some of the great um grays pittsburgh grays players like josh gibson here's roberto clemente 1973 here's his autograph said he loved to sign autographs for kids and he was active from 55 to 72 18 seasons 
3,000 hits exactly. I think 12 gold gloves also. All right, let's go inside the park. I think they opened the gates. Since the team's not very good this year, the tickets were pretty cheap for good seeds. By the way, really good to see Andrew McCutcheon back in a Pirates uniform this year. Let's go on in. There's the Pittsburgh Pirates Hall of Fame. Let's see who all's over there. Roberto Clemente Walker. I love all the team spirit. Let's check out the view from the outfield seats, or the standing deck. Nice. Right over the bullpen, or bullpens. Chicago Cubs batting practice. They have a giant bobblehead you can take a photo with. 1977 on his jersey. Very cool. Let's explore. I love it already. Team Spirit's big to me when you go to a park. I want to see it. That's a really cool Coca-Cola advertising. Checking out the team store. Oh, right away, Clemente stuff. Lots of Clemente stuff. I said I wasn't going to get a hat, but I always want one of these pillbox ones. Oh, awesome, Dave, nice. Oh, and check this out. That's Roberto's uniform right there with the mural of him. Look at this, wow. Very cool. But also they have hats. That I might be into on the way out. I love it. Look, here's Willie's jersey. Willie Stargell with a mural of him next to it. I still think Dave Parker belongs in the Hall of Fame. One for Andrew McCutcheon also. I'm a big fan of this place already. I like it. Look, a stadium you can actually get dollar dogs. They got me. I'll have one. I mean, it's only a dollar. Watch some batting practice. You gonna get it? Close. Right down there. Oh, is he gonna get this one? Thank you, Pittsburgh, for a dollar dog. I can't believe it. Oh, I went to another store. Look at this. Dave and Stargell. Nice. Mazeroski. Stargell stars. They need a Dave Parker shirt like this. Any Sanguin. I stand corrected. They have one. Steal your face. Grateful Dead. Look at this statue to Ralph Kiner's hands. Kiner played for the Pirates from 46 to 52. Hit 301 home runs for the Bucks and ranked second on the club's all-time list. 1949, he hit a club record of 54 home runs. His seven full seasons with the Pirates, Kiner won or shared the National League home run title. A streak unmatched in either league. Kiner was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1975. Kind of interesting, there's neighboring buildings kind of like built around the park. <laughs> Dave Parker's year, right there. Yes. Doc Ellis. Oh, a pirate's vehicle up here. Raise the Jolly Roger. Only if we win. But there it is. There's the wheel. And there's where the flag will go. Okay. Oh, nice. Kind of like Andy Warhol, Willie Stargell. Over here, you can hold a piece of history. They have one of Dave Parker's bats, Ryan Sandberg. Roberto Clemente. I did that at the Hall of Fame. Here I am holding it with a white glove. That's pretty crazy. I didn't think I'd get a hold of Roberto Clemente's bat today, but 
with a white glove, I did. And I actually own two of Dave's game use bats that he verified for me in person, so I'll let somebody else hold those. This guy's actually making Louisville Sluggers right here. And we're in the very, very back. They have more bobbleheads, like a bridge for kids to play on over here. Kind of like the pirate ship theme. These are different eras of the mascot, these bobbleheads. 1980. I get it, I get it. He used to sit on a pirate's arm. Okay, I walked past this, saw it, I caved. Cherry pie funnel cake fries. I swear it's the last bad thing I'm gonna have tonight. Well, that's cool. Now let's go find our seats. Seventy four yearbook. Big Dave. The lumber company. That's great. Nineteen seventy six. Hey, that crew. I got sidetracked. Let's go find our seats. Okay, we're down here behind the dugout. Okay, hey, all stars for the month of August. Congratulations. Thanks for all Pretty good seats. Fourth row. So that's a view from behind home plate. How cool is that? In the shrubbery, it says Pirates. 3,000th hit in last game. They have an amazing amount of history all over the place. I love it. See the rest of this place. Yeah, Willie yeah. Stargell's 1982 jacket. There he is. Brad Williams. <laughs> New pitcher in. saw in the news that Bray Wyatt passed away today when I'm filming this. Very sad. Come on! Yeah! Touch them all! Pierogi race. Those are all pierogies. 
I was contemplating buying this, then I realized I buy a lot of stuff from this company, Baseball Lives. So I figured I could just buy it online. Then I looked online, they don't have them anymore. So I had to get it here, one size bigger than I usually get. Decided to come watch the end in the outfield. Light just went out, they're bringing in the closer. And the crowd goes wild! Pinch hitting McCutcheon. They love him here. Started his career here. Well, my friends, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And next time we come to Pittsburgh, maybe we'll check out the Clemente Museum. Have a great night and goodbye.